Hello, this is Deborah Baker with Trusted CISO, and today we're going to be going over the CISSP in 10 minutes. This is Security and Risk Management, Part 2. So one of the most important things you need to do is actually manage your security function. So you need to have a set of policies, governance, and it needs to be top down. So we're going to be talking about that. You need to have annual risk assessments to ensure that you're actually following your security policies. And you can also update the policies at least annually. Now you need to align your security program to your company strategy mission goals. If you don't, it's just going to be, you know, this side thing. It's not going to be, there's not going to be proper funding or budget for it. And it's not going to be taken seriously. So again, you need to create, implement, and enforce a security policy. You need to have support from the top down. You need to prioritize security measures based on your budget and resource restrictions and develop the business case if you know, you need to purchase new tools or take action on something and you need, you know, budget or resources that you can then present up to your manager and up through executive management so that you get the support, the budget, the resources for the particular project. Now, you have to have executive leadership buy-in to your information security program or it's not going to work. It's that, I mean, if, if it's not taken seriously, then you're not going to have the resources or the budget. So top down approach, um, the ISC squared book does mention bottom up, but that's just not going to be successful as a top down approach. And middle management is going to ensure that employees follow the policies. So typically you'll have a chief information security officer and this person, they also might just be called director of information security and it's understood that that's the CISO. A lot of times they'll be right under the CEO. This is actually kind of unusual. Typically there'll be um, a chief technology officer and then the CISO will go below that. The CISO does need to have access to the CEO in case there is a major issue that needs to be addressed and it's not being properly reported up to the CEO because bottom line is the CEO is responsible for the security program and protecting data you know, customer data and the data of the employees. Um, and also the board of directors are also responsible too. So you need to make sure that there isn't some sort of middle management that is blocking this communication. But this could be many different ways. You could, you know, the CISO could actually be re reporting to director of engineering. That's not really the best setup. I definitely think um, the CISO or director of information security, it also could be a VP. Uh, reporting to chief technology officer is much better setup, but also knowing that they do have access and they can talk to the CEO, you know, like on a quarterly basis or in the event that there is something so important that needs to be addressed and not, you know, looked over or whatever. So under the CISO is the information security team. And so they're responsible for deploying and maintaining security tools and software. Now, again, you need senior management support for your security program to be successful. And now typically you're not going to see, you are going to see an information security policy and several other policies for an information security governance program. But for large organizations, you're going to have a strategic plan. It's typically five years. It defines a security purpose and it will tie in the security to align it to your corporate mission and objectives, which is very important. Tactical plan, this could be more ad hoc, but for government entities, they're going to actually have these plans. Tactical is more like, how are we going to get, you know, these are the tools we're going to do. These are, this is what we're going to buy at six months, at one year, two years. You know, in five years, we plan to have zero trust in this many areas, things like that. And this is the, these are the products that we're going to look at. The operational 
operational plan. This is more like actually project management plans, project plans, training plans, deployment plans. So it's not like you're going to have separate ones just for information security, but you know, when you're deploying whatever that is and you have a project plan, then that would fall under the operation plan. Again, for smaller organizations, they don't typically have these. You're, you're going to see these in larger organizations and in government entities. Data classification is very important and it's very serious in the government. And I actually had a top secret clearance when I was in the Air Force and there were separate systems, whether it was top secret, secret, confidential. And even though I had a top secret clearance, I actually never handled top secret information, but, but I was trained and I knew there was a separate system and things like that. So secret is there could be critical damage to the U.S. government. And then as you go down, so confidential, there could be serious damage if this information is leaked. And then sensitive but unclassified is internal use privacy. And then unclassified would just be, you know, there doesn't need to be any special protections. In the corporate world, you'll typically just see three levels. So you have confidential slash private, and there's significant damage to the company if this is released. So this could be um, source code. This could be uh, PII data. It just depends on your company and depends on the data that you're looking at. Then there's sensitive data and then there's public data. And public data is data that's already known. So doesn't need any special protections. And you will have all companies that have a security governance program will have a data classification policy. It could be part of another policy. So if you were asking why well, I want to see the data classification policy, it could be bundled in your information security policy. But you will have one for data governments, especially if you are SOC 2 or ISO 27001 compliant. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be continuing on the CISSP. Again, this is a subscriber request and remember to hit like, subscribe, and notifications.